everyone uses the Nano VNA to test antenna performance, check their SWR. We're not doing that today. Instead, we're going to use the Nano VNA FV2 to do something way cooler. We're going to x-ray an attenuator and figure out if I bought a piece of junk or if this guy here just saved my other piece of test equipment, my tiny SA. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Let's get over to the bench, take a look at what we get in the box and show you the procedure on how to test attenuators. First, we need a Nano VNA to test with and why not get a good one? This one comes with a USB cable. Oh, and it's one of those fancy fabric covered models. Nice. Comes in bubble wrap too. I like bubble wrap. And then it even comes with its own little carrying case, but there are better versions of carrying cases out there. And we're gonna check out one of those. Thanks for acquiring this three gigahertz portable vector network analyzer. And then a bunch of information, latest user manual, software, and firmware downloads available at sysjoint.com. And we've got the, that's actually kind of heavy. It's in an all metal case. USB port on the side, and then you get a bunch of adapters. So normally they just come with the inline, this one here, but now we've got one of each. And we've also got a right angle connector. And then you get your test standards. So open, short, and load, a stylus, a test cable, and then another test cable. Okay, first things first. If I can get it. If I can get a finger hold on it, come on, there we go. Ah, yes, that is gone now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to work out whether we have good attenuators or not. And you need to know how much attenuation they are because it says 40 dB and that's plus or minus whatever. So we're gonna figure out how much plus or minus whatever it actually is. I have made this handy dandy cheat sheet for you here that will walk you through the steps for doing the attenuator testing, the attenuator evaluation or characterization. Each one of the nano VNAs or the VNA type systems that share this kind of common theme, it's just a little tiny bit different. This cheat sheet here is for the nano VNA FV2, which is what we have here on the bench today. And what I am going to do is leave a link in the description down below for you to find other versions of this sheet for the other versions of the nano VNAs that I happen to have in my possession that I can run this test sheet for. So let's get started. Okay, so let's follow along with our procedure here. Turn the nano VNA on, beep, beep, and you're gonna get a welcome beep. And then you're gonna see a whole bunch of mess on the screen and we need to clear that up. So I'm gonna go from first principles on up. So your nano VNA may be a little tiny bit different. I've got different documents for each version of the nano VNA in the description down below for you. Each version that I personally have and can put my fingers on and verify the procedure of that is. But you might find yours in a state or you might be a little more advanced. Just understand, you know, start from scratch, work your way through the process or kind of adapt as you go along. So on the side of this one, there is this menu button. I need to tap the menu button to get in. I'm gonna clean this display up first. Display trace. Some of them have check marks. This one happens to have an A, meaning active, is the one that I'm going to be doing the configuring. I want to make sure that everything is off. That gives me a nice clean nano VNA to work with. And then I want to turn trace zero on. And if I have another one turned on, you can see that trace one is the active one and there's a check mark next to trace zero saying that it's on. Yours might only have check marks. It depends on which model you have. I'm going to turn trace one off. I'm going to leave trace zero on as the active trace. And I'm going to hit back. And in this case, I'm going to choose format and I wanna make sure it says log mag. It might already say log mag or you might have to pick it and then push back. And then I wanna make sure that I am measuring through S21 through, which is the lower port. I need to do a through measurement. Yours might say S11. Yes, I said S21, S21, work with me here. So we need to measure S21, the through, and then we need to go back. And then from there, I wanna set the stimulus. I'm going to be measuring the power output attenuation abilities of an attenuator. And in my mind, the mission parameters, yours may be different, but that's why we have a worksheet and you can put frequencies in there, are that I'm going to be testing a two meter handy talkie for harmonics on my tiny SA. And I wanna make sure my attenuator can protect my tiny SA from the power of the radio. That power in theory should be concentrated at the frequency that I'm testing, 146.52 in this case. So I wanna do my stimulus around 146.52. Stimulus, start, 100 and it's megahertz. So that gets me about 50 megahertz below. And then I need to tap the menu again. I need to do stop and set a stop range of 200. So it gets me 50 megahertz below, 50 megahertz above the frequency of interest. 
The reason why I'm doing this is the Nano VNA, when you use it from the front panel like this, only has 101 data points. So if I tried to sweep from, let's say, 3 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz to verify the entire range of this attenuator, I've only got 101 data points to drop in the middle of there, and we're talking almost a billion points needed. It's over a billion points needed. It's test the frequency that you're interested in and know that it's good at that frequency. You're trying to measure the attenuator. I'm not trying to sweep an attenuator here. So you can expand or contract the frequency parameters to start and stop stimulus as you want. And there's a little spot on the worksheet that I've linked down below where you can put in those start and stop parameters. And once they're in, you can see them down here at the bottom, start and stop. So now we've got a screen set up the way we want. We've got a stimulus set the way that we want. We need to calibrate the device for that stimulus to clean up all of this mess right now. Right now it's just reading air off of the two ports here. So I need to tap the menu on the side. I need to go back. I need to choose Cal. When I'm inside the Cal menu, now I want to reset the calibration, which is gonna clean all that mess up on the screen. And it's kind of a belt and suspenders thing. I like to reset so I'm at absolute zero and then work my way through the calibration, which is what we're gonna do now. So I wanna hit calibrate on screen and I need some parts. So I need my coax jumper, I need my barrel connector here, and the first calibration you need to do is with the open. And you have two of these test standards that look fairly similar to each other. But if you look inside of them, you can see that one of them has a center pin and one of them doesn't. And if you take the one with the center pin and you measure it on your multimeter, you'll probably find that there's continuity between the center pin and the shield. And if there's not, you should probably get another test standard. But I want the one that doesn't have the center pin in it. That's the open standard. So I'm gonna put the open standard on the end of my coax. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mathematically remove these from all of the future equations. So I'm gonna put this on port one. So port one, short coax jumper, barrel connector, and open standard. And now I can tap open, and it's gonna give me a little screen there that says that it's doing the calibration. If you have an older model, it'll give you a blue line across the top and it will automatically move down to the short. This model that I have right now gives me that little window in the center that tells me that it's doing it. It beeps for some feedback and then when it's done, it returns me back to my screen and it's up to me to do the next step. The next step is to remove the open and put that short on there. And every time you manipulate your coax, you just wanna make sure that all your connections are still tight. So now I'm gonna test my short Okay, and now I need to put my load on there. So I'm gonna remove the short. And you can tell you have the load because it's the two-tone version. It's kind of a gold color and a silver color. And this is a 50 ohm dummy load standard to be able to read out all of the coax and barrel connectors and everything in between. So once that's on, I verified all of my coax connectors are tight. I'm gonna hit load and it has now done the load. On this one, I don't have an isolation test, but on your tiny SA, on your tiny SA, on your Nano VNA, you might have an isolation test that you can run. And so what you wanna do is take your 50 ohm load standard and put that on your port two, your S21 port. But I need to do the through calibration on this one, which will be the next step after you do the isolation on yours if you have that step. And that's where I introduce a second piece of coax to this assembly, this test harness, this fixture. And so what I have is port one going through the barrel into the other piece of coax and into port two. I'm gonna use this piece of coax, I'm gonna use this barrel, and I'm gonna use this piece of coax in my testing. So now I am zeroing those all out by doing a through calibration. That's done, now I hit done, and it wants me to save it in a slot. You can pick any one of these slots. I'm gonna save it over the one that I already did for getting this documentation ready for the video. And now that is saved. And I can see that I've got a log mag of zero dB up here. And that indicates that this test harness is zeroed out. And that's what we want. Next up, what I have is a couple of different attenuators here. This one I think is bad. This is supposed to be a 40 dB attenuator. So we're gonna test that out and verify that it is good or it is bad. These are both 20s. I'm gonna test the two 20s first. We'll see how the procedure works and we'll verify that they look pretty good. So I need to separate the coax and insert the device under test, the DUT. This is actually a pretty simple, straightforward test once you get through setting everything up. Make sure all my coax connectors are good. And now what I see on my reading up here, my log mag, my attenuation is minus 19.37. This is a 20 dB attenuator. So 
it's reading pretty good. I will take that number and I'll note it at the bottom of my worksheet and I will use that. I have no idea when attenuators are going to go bad or if they're ever going to go bad or if they went bad in storage or they went bad during that last test that I ran. So it might be a good idea to test your attenuators quickly before each time you do a tiny SA session using the attenuator. So on here, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not, but 10 watts, 20 dB, this goes to six gigahertz. So we've got two of those. If you have one, you know you're always right. If you have two, you don't know what's wrong. So we'll verify this real quick. Make sure all our coax is nice and tight. And this one is 19.38, 19.37. Pretty solid reading there, excellent. So now that I have two known good attenuators, if I test this next one, I can pretty much trust my test apparatus here, my instrument. I'm gonna put in this one here that I think is a little bad. And this is supposed to be a 40 dB attenuator. And it is reading at 68 dB here. 69, 68 and a half, 69 and a quarter, 70. So it's reading a little interesting. And if we separate this attenuator out, you can see that number is pretty close to open air. We were somewhere around 69, 70, and now we're around 88. So not a whole lot of attenuation compared to open air. And I'll put that down on my worksheet. And I will note that this is actually not a 40 dB attenuator. It's a 70 dB attenuator. This video is brought to you by our friends over at CC. They had sent in this Nano VNA F v2 version 2 for testing and i wanted to show you how you could use it to test out attenuators there will be a link to the cheat sheet down in the description below as well as a link with a discount code for the nano vna f v2 from cc